My name is uh, Stefan Kampelmann. Uh, I'm an economist by training uh, and I work at the Faculty of Architecture, La Cambre Horta, at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. No idea. I have to... Uh, probably probably um, more or less around the same time that I got in, in involved in circular economy. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, uh, I could say which, which of these two concepts uh, was, was, was the first. I think it was more or less at uh, the same time that I heard about urban metabolism and, uh, and circular economy. I think both both of these uh, these terms um, were uh, like uh, quite intuitive from from the beginning. Like uh, okay, these things kind of you don't need a, a huge explanation of what is behind them because themselves they are like concepts that are quite uh, intuitive and, and accessible. And I think uh, that's also why uh, why I was uh, I think really starting to use them by myself to illustrate certain things that before maybe didn't really have a name. Or, or like a like a catch-all thing that you could say, okay, you know, this whole discussion about uh, sustainability of cities or or a new way of doing the economy. Uh, well, you have circular economy and urban metabolism, and and then I started to talk about circular metabolism. So so that's kind of a, um, a good way to to have a shortcut to a, a whole bunch of uh, different concepts and thinking uh, in in just this one uh, this one term. As a, yeah, like as a way of, of uh, explaining to people uh, what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, like what in what field are you working? Mm -hmm. uh, so like I'm I'm in, uh, like a, I'm economist by uh, that then moved into uh, like the the uh, the exploration of environmental uh, issues or environmental problems, especially urban areas. But that's a long <laughs> like you know that's a long uh, that's a long line. Um, so. Um, uh, uh, just to say, like I'm working on how to 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 turn the metabolism of cities more circular. It's just a it's just a very uh, straightforward thing to today. So, it's, but it's more it's more about like a, like a, the 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 tagline that con that was conveniently capturing the field uh, that I'm working, and not like one aspect of the field. It's it's the field that I'm working on: circular economy and urban metabolism. I think it's mainly um, still, I mean, it's very different for circular economy and urban metabolism. Circular economy has made uh, inroads in, in loads of discussions, in policy making, uh, consultants have been actually the first to pick it up and, and you know, like put it in, into their way of, you know, framing necessary transitions or new strategies of doing business and etc. So circular economy is, 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 is everywhere. Or at least it's it's becoming a, like a mainstream thing, whereas uh, urban metabolism has stayed a more uh, like a more scientific term or more uh, like like a, like like a, like a concept more than a policy. Also because it's it's more descriptive in its scope. You know, it's like circular economy is already like we want to render the economy more circular. So there's a, there's a thrust, there's an objective, there's a normative thing to it as well. Because linear thing is bad and the circular thing is good, uh, whereas urban metabolism is just like any city, be it circular or, or linear, uh, uh, has a metabolism. You know, so it's just a descriptive, uh, um, rather than I mean, it's descriptive and analytical, but but less normative. You know, so it's so it's more uh, uh, like a tool that you can use, uh, you know, in, in academic discussions or in, in studies on how cities work. And so it has been more limited to people who are who are studying and discussing uh, cities in academic uh, contexts or other, uh, I mean, other other people that in institutions have been um, trying to, you know, um, um, condense uh, huge amounts of information and data on on cities into one, uh, you know, one uh, um, one approach. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think uh, many policymakers, or uh, I mean the, the the general public, would f still find the term a bit exotic. 
mm. and, uh, and and really just discovering the metaphor you know ah, okay like his body has a metabolism and the city has also a metabolism and uh, okay you can talk about urban metabolism but but you know that's that's still uh, you know that, that's still um, not into mainstream discussions it's hard to say because I'm obviously very biased in the kind of you know encounters and, and discussions that I uh, that I have due to the fact that I'm I, you know I'm very interested in it and I'm, I meet people that are also interested in it so you might get the impression that uh, um, that more and more people uh, talk about it because you know uh, the people that you meet are all doing that um, th th this being said I, I think there's kind of a tendency in um, I mean, in the large cities, but also also maybe in, in, in smaller cities, to try to find ways to to deal differently with uh, you know big amounts of data that they have, or or gaining a more holistic understanding of what's going on in, in the city development, and, and and this is kind of triggering maybe like a more interest also to to explore urban metabolism as a as a, as a tool and as a like as a way to deal with that amount of information. And, and I think this is this is increasing. It's 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 probably more uh, has been picked up more uh, on the on the other on the northern side of the the, the border. So I think the Dutch uh, um, policymakers or public administrations and you know consulting landscape has been um, uh, kind of more enthusiastic in embracing the term to to talk about complexities with loads of flows. Uh, um, but also in Belgium, uh, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, m m there, there is a tendency of saying okay you know this is maybe what we need to to understand uh, the complexity of of you know this 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 uh, this this living thing of a city with loads of things uh, moving all around and and different databases that cover different things loads of lots of uh, uh, parameters that we want to understand. Uh, it's too complex to to do it right now, but maybe this is something that we can use as a as a kind of yeah as a, as a framework or or as a bunch of tools that we can uh, that we can deploy. To me, um, one of the, the the challenges that I find very interesting and uh, and to which. Uh, um, uh, like on, on which we, we uh, I think should spend more energy on is to to find uh, um, representations of of uh, this thing urban metabolism. I mean the metaphor is fine enough, but but afterwards you end up with uh, I mean these huge data sets and uh, and and, and uh, like um, very uh, um, well things that are hard to communicate in the end and that are difficult to use by non-experts. And the, the risk is to, to oversimplify things and have like very simple representations of the urban metabolism. Uh, so, so I think if we had better tools to, to, to visualize and represent without oversimplifying the complexity of, of metabolic flows, I, I think that would really make a difference in terms of you know, showing a minister uh, in charge of, I don't know, uh, uh, like uh, the development programs, well, you know, this is what's going on, uh, this is how it could look like, uh, uh, you, know, or, you know, just to, just to condense information in a, in, a, in, a, in a more reasonable way. And I don't think we have seen uh, like the, the, the perfect tool for that yet. I mean, there's, there's people working on that. Uh, um, that, that you know, they create uh, very impressive uh, graphics, <laughs> and then the you know flow diagrams that are more sophisticated, etc. But but sometimes it still ends up in spaghetti soup, and then you don't really understand more. You just see, oh, okay, it's complex, but uh, you don't you know, and, uh, you, you can't work with that to to formulate policy, for example. But that's you know we need these kind of if you want policymakers to engage with it and use that in their decision making, it's it can't on, not only. It should not only represent complexity, but also you know ways to deal with it, uh, lines of force, uh, opportunities, uh, etc. So yeah, like uh, better representations, better way of condensing information without uh, um, oversimplifying or reducing uh, too, 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 too much the, uh, the, um, the amount of information that is conveyed. Maybe to illustrate that uh, this kind of kind of work with uh, something that I'm working on right now, 
so we uh, we work on uh, um, the different flows uh, of organic matter here in, in, in Brussels. And uh, you could say, okay, there's there's uh, um, there's 400,000 tons of, of uh, organic uh, matter in terms of food imported into the city, and uh, uh, out of that, uh, 200,000 tons uh, end up in, in, in the incinerator. And you 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 discuss the 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 overall metabolism in terms of you know these big flows. And afterwards, you can you can you can distinguish different types of organic flows. If you know kitchen waste, green waste, in within green waste, you can you know split it up into different fractions, etc. Uh, you can distinguish between different types of producers of of organic waste. Uh, you can uh, look at different treatment options that you have for dealing with the organic waste. You can look at different collection mechanisms. So you can open the box of what is really going on in the city or how it could be uh, Im improved. And you end up with a, with, a, with a matrix of a super complicated system. Okay, with loads of data. And so I try to make a, like a visualization of, of, of this based on like a you know, big database of, of flows that we uh, you know, put together with, uh, with, with uh, colleagues here at the, uh, at the faculty. And you end up in, a, in like a very sophisticated tool in which you see it all, but in, a, in an incomprehensible way for anybody who's not you know, used to looking at a, at a big flow diagram. So I did this with a like with a with a software for uh, you know mapping material flow, material flows. So I was very happy with it. So I said, okay, finally I see it all, and I'm I'm sure I don't forget anything, and I like have all the nuances, and I make all the distinctions and everything. And I showed it to the uh, to the to to the guy I'm working with at the regional environmental administration, working on organic waste, who who is an expert on the topic, and he told me like you know that's not useful. That, like I don't see anything. Nobody like I don't understand it. Nobody will understand it. This is way too complicated. The minister will throw it out. Like this is this is not helpful, you know. So and then he showed me a diagram that we produce like a synthesis diagram that we produced in another study that that, that uh, like an architect, a, co a colleague of mine, produced very nice, very simple diagram, uh, nice colors, uh, uh, like a kind of more appealing way. And this, you know, that could be like uh, try to do something more like this, you know. And uh, um, yeah, and that, that like you know that proved to me like okay you know this, this simple diagram uh, um, f for me had a lot of uh, lacuna because it missed certain things that we actually wanted to push you know so <laughs> you know some of the things that we wanted to that that uh, for example policymakers to to understand weren't really on that simplified diagram so I needed my complicated diagram and and now I kind of you know I'm trying to explore something maybe in between or, or like maybe uh, um, uh, s something that renders certain aspects of a more complicated diagram more appealing or more visual like you know adding I don't know you have in the flow diagram you have a you had a picture of the the the, the, the factory or the like a picture of uh, um, like a treatment uh, process or something to you know to create uh, points of attention that this is the important stuff and all the other things are maybe less important but if you want to look at them you can go into them so so um, and there's no like now there's no off-the-shelf tool that you can say okay you know this is this is the exactly the right tool because I think uh, uh, in each case uh, um, I mean the attention span is maybe different the, the the knowledge of the people that are using the tools is is different so you can expect maybe more from from a technical uh, um, uh, policy uh, um, officer than from a, from somebody in a cabinet who has uh, you know two minutes to uh, to discuss uh, one thing uh, before jumping into the next uh, topic you know so 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 this is like a like an example of um, yeah, like a like a like a concrete uh, uh, way that we uh, you know try to invent new representations of urban metabolism that you know become used outside of academia. Maybe it's the tools, you know. So if you had the you know tools that everybody needs, like all these different. M maybe there's a certain uh, uh, like there's different types of actors that that could use the same tool for their job like the academic can use it to deal with the uh, you know data complexity the policymaker can use it to show that the their policy you know reaches certain objectives 
um, you know, the, 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 the policy officer can use it to, to uh, um, monitor, uh, you know, daily, daily stuff. Um, so if you had the like tools that are used by different actors, maybe that's that's a way to say, okay, we're always coming back uh, to the same thing. So that's why we like when tools uh, evolve, you need to you know talk to each other and uh, and uh, and collaborate. So maybe it's maybe it's uh, sharing similar tools, which implies that you know certain things that are used in the academic world need to uh, be maybe. Uh, um, a bit less sophisticated or a bit more more accessible or there's like different layers of, of things like you know that there can be a sophisticated version or complicated like in the spaghetti diagram that I just mentioned like you know I can have this at the back end but then the same thing feeds into maybe an interface that is much more uh, accessible and much more um, yeah kind of condensing things and uh, yeah so 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 tools maybe but uh, but I think uh, um, uh, like another avenue of, of further collaboration on urban metabolism I mean it's also uh, I mean uh, would be nice to see a world in which uh, the policymakers see this really as a, as a thing that they that they that they, that they um, uh, you know put higher up on the agenda and say like you know it's, 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 it's an actual thing that we try to improve like the urban metabolism of of a city like I don't know Paris or, or London or Brussels, it, it is is something that we um, consider as a as a like a, as an object that we want to work with, which they don't so far because so far uh, like uh, until now uh, you have a guy that's in charge of energy, you have a guy in charge of water, there's a guy in charge of uh, whatever concrete uh, or like a building building uh, the, the building sector or like urbanism. And, uh, and nobody's in charge of the urban metabolism because it's the whole thing together, you know? So, um, you know, in order to, of, you know, to different people to work together, like at some point, you know, it should be said that, like, you know, like with climate change, to say this whole abstract thing becomes a thing that we, the climate change becomes something that we, that we want to address and that we, uh, that we want to work on. Urban metabolism could be another, like, transversal, uh, systemic thing that we say okay we, we attach certain objectives to this to, to this uh, way of seeing the world like let's say uh, uh, if there's a way to say uh, the urban metabolism is, is so much linear or so much circular it would be nice to 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 then based on that measurement say okay uh, our objective is to become so much more percent uh, circular by by that uh, by, by in 10 years or something you know, then everybody could work with it. Then policymakers could relate to it. Then researchers could say, "Okay, you want to reach that objective. Here's a couple of things that you that you might consider, or we, we did some scenarios, or or we tested things." Final things. I I, I think there's a risk in, in uh, urban metabolism of being uh, kind of non-realistic. Uh, uh, it's a discussion. I mean, cities are gaining. I mean, cities have so much attraction to them. I mean, they're they're gaining uh, traction uh, as we speak. Uh, by the day, uh, big cities grow uh, grow bigger, and urban metabolism is is. I mean, for me also include that it's an attractive field because it feeds on that dynamism and and the the attractiveness of cities. It has the risk of of like uh, um, of forgetting everything that is outside of cities you know so it's, it's like uh, urban urbanites that are interested in the environment uh, uh, look at what's going on w in this parameter w whereas it's maybe more important or is, is, is as important to to look at things at, at bigger scales and look more as uh, like at the scale of the territory on which the city depends and uh, urban metabolism sometimes has the uh, I mean has the risk of like you know just staying within these city boundaries and like okay let's improve the city etc like the way that the city works and and forgetting the relationship between the cities and uh, and and the territories on which they depend and so 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 like you know I this this notion of territorial metabolism or territorial ecology kind of circumvents that or like it overcomes a bit this this uh, being confined to to the urban metabolism to the urban part of the urban metabolism because any urban metabolism is always a metabolism that that uh, is an interaction 
between uh, the, the urban core and uh, the peripheral territories or other cities with which they, they, they engage. So, uh, I mean, let's, let's, uh, let's use urban metabolism, but let's not forget that this, th there's a, there's a, that the, the, the uh, urban moment to it is only a part of the, of the flows.